up until fairly recently, I was a big fan of a small application known as Ferdy. Ferdy was a part of a small collection of applications known as messaging browsers. Basically, a dedicated web browser for use with your messaging services. So things like your Facebook Messenger, Discord, Element, things like that. Now, this might seem completely useless, but it was great for managing multiple accounts and great if you're the sort of person who tends to get distracted because it has built-in features to disable your ability to use those during certain hours of the day. Regardless of the problems you might have with it if you go and use it yourself, I found it to be quite convenient and it tend to keep me fairly organized. But recently the developer basically just vanished. So the website is gone, the Twitter is gone, the GitHub organization is here, but any of the repos related to the main 30 project completely gone, and then the Open Collective has been archived. There was a fairly brief period where the website did return, maybe for like a day or so, but then shortly after that, it just completely vanished again. Now, if this was just being used as an offline application, it wouldn't really be that big of a deal. You can just keep using it until some sort of other update on your system goes and breaks the application. But it also had an online account management system, so I wasn't using this, I was managing all of my configs locally, and if I needed to go to another computer, I would just go and copy the configs over. But like most browsers out there, there was an online synced functionality, so if you wanted to have all of the exact same setup on one computer and another, that was a fairly convenient way to do it. Plus, whenever you open up the application, it defaults to whatever you were using last time. So if you have an account, it defaults to that. If you don't have an account, it defaults to that. If you don't have an account, as we can see, it still works perfectly fine. But if you do, the application literally wouldn't function because it would softlock itself not being able to connect to the server. Now, developers stopping an open source project isn't really that surprising. We could think of thousands upon thousands of occurrences where this has happened, even in my own personal experience. Like, there have been projects where I've been working on it, then at one point I'm like, you know what? This is terrible, I'm just gonna leave it there and then never work on it again. If someone wants to fork it and work on it themselves, that's cool, I really don't care. But all of my projects, nobody else is using them. If they are, that's cool, but that's not the intention. But something like Ferdy, it did have a relatively sizable user base. And usually when that's the case, you would give some sort of notification through one of the official channels. You would say, hey, I'm going to stop developing this in a month, in a week, whenever it is. Maybe you would go and update the readme saying this is no longer being developed, or maybe you would go and take the repo on GitHub and then stick it into archive mode. But deleting a project and all of its presence online is a little bit strange. But the main maintainer, the guy who actually has the power to delete the project, has been doing a couple of really strange things lately. One of those being the update to the issue tracker. The issue tracker got disabled, so it was reported that some debug information shared in our GitHub issue tracker may leak private data such as private messages due to some services logging them in the browser console and users including the browser console in their reports. Now, this wasn't archived, but this used to also say if you would like to see the issue tracker, then become a GitHub sponsor. But the subreddit, rightfully so, got pretty angry about this because it was $9 a month. Nine US dollars a month to see the issue tracker. Now, if they were saying, hey, $9 a month is a donation to the project, I don't think anyone would really get annoyed by that. But framing it as you can submit issues and read the issue tracker for $9 a month, that's going to obviously annoy a lot of people. Plus, it just doesn't make any sense. Because if the issue is private data being leaked, why does it matter if I pay you money? The private data is still there. But while this was happening, the Twitter account was doing some really weird stuff. And I really wish that I got screenshots of this while this was happening. So randomly, the dev would just retweet some random political statement, not like just left wing or just right wing, just random political statements, I guess maybe to try start fights with people or something, I don't really know. And then just random other things that have nothing to do with the project whatsoever, sort of just treating it like their personal account. And then maybe five minutes, 30 minutes later, they would go and delete all of that 
and then do it all again the next day. But then on the Open Collective, which a lot of open source projects use for managing their donations, the developer was taking out money for things that basically made no sense. Why Open Collective is great is because all of the expenses are made public. So if we go over to view all expenses, a lot of these things in here make a lot of sense. But things like $42 for writing tweets, $362 for answering questions. Nobody on the Reddit knows what questions are being answered. They weren't being answered on the GitHub, on the Twitter, on the subreddit, anything like that. Anywhere the developer would actually answer questions. So no one knows why this money was taken out. Now, I'm not going to say the developer shouldn't be making money. The purpose of the Open Collective is to pay for the development of the project, pay for things like server costs, for commissions, for advertising, and things like that, and obviously while they are developing the code. But if you're someone who donated to this project, seeing expenses like this being made, they just don't really make any sense. And once again, the subreddit got kind of annoyed by this. At this stage, a lot of people were starting to turn on the dev because a lot of the money was just being wasted. So when the project went down, people got really, really confused. They're like, is the dev just taking the money and running? Like, did something happen to them? What's going on? But when the Twitter temporarily came back, it posted this. We are currently experiencing a major outage. Please be patient while we investigate the issue. Now, that sounds, you know, somewhat convincing until you think about it for more than like three seconds. So you're having an outage, an outage that leads to your Twitter, Instagram, GitHub, website, everything else related to the project all being deleted. So did you have someone compromise all of your passwords? Like, how is that an outage? That seems to be a lot more than just an outage. And what set people off is that nobody could reply to this. But there were still quote tweets. And the weird thing about the quote tweets, or the people that were like, atting Ferdy asking what the hell was going on, is the guy running the Twitter account started to like and retweet all of the criticism, and then like with the random political comments from earlier, would delete it a couple of hours later, and then temporarily doing the exact same thing on their personal account, going and liking and retweeting the criticism, going deleting it a couple of hours later, and then ultimately going and privating the account. At this stage, nobody has any clue what's happened. Some people are theorizing maybe it was a hostile takeover by another project because there was a brief period of time where the website, rather than being down, redirected to Rambox, which is one of its competitors. So some people thought maybe the project was purchased by Rambox and then Rambox started to do the redirection, but considering everything is down now, that really doesn't make any sense. Some other people are thinking maybe that Dev had like a mental breakdown and doesn't want to work on the project anymore. Regardless of what's happened, this small community has completely turned on the Dev and are looking for alternatives. And the main reason why I'm doing this video is because this guy right here, my face, was being used to promote the application. I made this video on Ferdy, they came to me after the video was made and said, hey, we like this video, can we use this to promote the application? I said, sure, go right ahead. They took a quote from the video, and that was totally fine. But then all of this happened, and I don't want anything to do with the project now. The dev seems to have just gone rogue, and I'm cutting all ties with this project. The only way I'm going to unprivate this video is if this dev comes out and says, my accounts were hacked, this is what happened, and then going forward, the project is going to be run, you know, in a sensible manner. But if it's going to be this going online, going offline, going online, going offline, randomly retweeting stuff, deleting that, posting stuff that has nothing to do with the project, deleting that... I just want nothing to do with you. Now, there is a follow-up repo called Ferdium, much like with Audacium when all of that stuff with Audacity happened. But like a lot of these, you know, very impromptu forks, I don't really think anything's actually going to happen. I know that one of the main developers on Ferdy is involved with this project or one of the other continuation forks, but... 
when you have a fallout like this happen, usually people split off into a bunch of different projects and can't really work out where they're going to work. So if this does sort of get continued into the future, I'm more than happy to cover it. But for now, it's sort of just dead in the water. If you're looking for an alternative, there are some that do exist. Things like Rambox, which I did cover on this channel, Web Catalog, Tangram, Sidekick, and the subreddit has a big list of other things that you might want to try out as well. But the only problem is the reason why I used Ferdy is because Ferdy felt like the best out of the entire bunch. But apparently Rambox recently had a rewrite and it's much better now. I haven't gone to try the rewrite out though, so I can't really say. Either way though, for me, I'm probably just going to go back to my regular old workflow using regular web browsers until I find something that really fits what I want to actually do. I don't like it when things like this happen in the FOSS world, but sometimes... It just does, and there's not really much that can be done about it. If you happen to know the dev or have some way to get in contact with them, please don't harass them, just leave them alone, and just let them fade into the irrelevancy of time. But that's going to be it for me, so if you were using Ferdy, let me know what you think about this. If you're going to go use something else, let me know what you're going to try out. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of it, these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to Johnny Barrow, pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.